looking recently at some of the research around what are the great preventative factors against bullying in schools. Uh, because uh, as you would all be very aware, it's not just about what you do when bullying comes along in schools, but it's also about what it is that you do that reduces both the prevalence and also the, the severity of bullying when it happens. Um, and I was looking at one of the factors that just kept coming up in these papers and these research pieces that I was looking at, and it was around cooperative learning. And I thought, I need to know more about why that keeps showing up. When I dug into it, what I found were these incredible things that started to emerge about when kids learn how to learn cooperatively together, when they learn how to solve a problem, particularly even an academic problem in the classroom, what happens is that they actually learn to take that skill and transfer it to other domains of their lives. They do it in the same way with things like resilience as well. Once you learn resilience in one place, for instance, if you can get through a football game with a bit of a scraped knee, the challenge then is can you move that resilience to the classroom or to your home environment. Such is the case when it comes to the ability to cooperatively learn. When you learn how to solve a problem with other people, what tends to happen is you look for the opportunities to solve problems with other people in other domains of your life. It could be an emotional domain where, for instance, bullying comes along. It could be just more, more broadly around the school community. It could be in your home. It could actually be even in the way that you're setting your life and your career up and the choices that you make when you hit the workforce. Hugely important stuff because it gives us the opportunity as teachers to deliver one and benefit often, which is just fantastic. When it comes to cooperative learning, I've always been incredibly inspired by the work of the wonderful Spencer Kagan, who told us that while it's great to put kids in groups, that if we do, the human dynamic tends to come over the top of it. So what we tend to do is we put kids, even in the optimum number for groups, which is, tends to be around four, if we put kids in groups of four and just give them a task to do, what tends to happen is we've got one student who says, great, I love group work, it's my time to shine. Kagan calls them the hog. And then you've got one student who says, great, I love group work, it's my time to do not very much. And Kagan calls them the log. And what he says is that we need to actually bring structure over the top of that so that the human element doesn't rise up too quickly and dominate the task. What we want to do is bring structure to the way that the kids are learning so that the way they're learning is actually more important than the content. Kagan says in any cooperative learning structure, there are four key elements. The first is positive interdependence, which means we have to need each other to get the task done. Individual accountability, everyone has a role. Equal participation, which means we've shared reasonably evenly, evenly the workload in that task. And then the, third, and the fourth one is simultaneous interaction, which means that we're not waiting for our turn to come off the bench too often and do something useful, that we're all active for a high percentage of the time. When we bring structures into our learning that comprise those four key areas, those key imperatives, what we do is we eliminate the possibility for human element and emotion to come in and we give these students a replicable way of solving problems. When they get success in the academic field, then they start to take it to other parts of their lives, which is fantastic. And that is why cooperative learning does such a good job in terms of improving bullying. Could you think about not only how you could get your kids into groups, but how you could train them to work effectively in groups so that they can take that learning not only to different parts of the academic program, but to other parts of their lives, including the way they might actually not bully each other.